All right, let's talk about a moral evaluation of sales practices by Holly. All right, so what I want to do here is just our usual very first uh, approach to a paper. So I want to kind of work through it. I know I've talked about this in class and we're just going to do a quick overview. So here we go. We read the begin. First, what's the first thing we do? That's right. We read the title, a moral evaluation of sales practices. Okay. So that's probably going to do what? I don't know. Uh, tell us that some sales practices are not okay. Others are okay. Maybe they're all okay. Okay. That's cool. All right. Are we going to read the introduction? No, we are not going to read the introduction. That is bad. We are going to read the very end. And if my com my iPad can keep up, I'm just going to keep scrolling. Oh my God, there's a lot of pages. All right. I guess I should have waited for this to download all the way. Okay. So what we're going to do is read the conclusion, right? And a lot of times what I, I like to do when I, um, you know, when there's a blank section headings like this, I think that's a great opportunity for me to just write that in uh, so that I know exactly what is going on. So this is the conclusion. Okay, so what does he say? I have attempted to provide a framework for evaluating the morality of different types of sales practices. Okay, cool, he's telling us how to do that. Um, it's, what was it based on? It was based on the, con the idea, the conditions for a mutually beneficial exchange. That looks like a really important word, right? Because if that's what the basis is, um, that's what everything is you know going to come down to so we need to we're going to need to know what that is i wonder what it means well it's an exchange well we're talking about sales so there's stuff being sold so the exchange is like the selling and the buying okay and beneficial means it's good and mutually you know it's so, so in other words the I, this is all going to come down to sales you know that are, are good for both people to some extent right now, obviously, it's a long paper. It's gonna we're gonna get a lot of sort of careful definition of that. But you know, again, remember what we're trying to do here is just get a general idea of how this is all gonna fit together. Okay. Um, so it, an inevitable qu qu question is whether this kind of evaluation is of any practical importance. Oh no 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 no! Stop stop! Don't read that. That's now just cleanup work. Okay. So I think we probably got everything we need so far. Right. Uh, this is all cleanup, so we'll probably want to look at that at some point. But remember, our goal right now is to move quick, jump around, figure out what the F is going on. So uh, let's go back. So we know that we're going to be getting a picture of, you know, sort of what kind of sales techniques are OK, which kinds are bad. And it's all going to boil down to the idea of um, being able to make exchanges which are mutually beneficial. So let's just skip back towards the beginning and see if there's anything we can see that helps us. And here's one thing you always wanna be sensitive to. If something is indented and if it has numbers on it, that's gonna be something really important. Don't worry about what it is, but it's gonna be something really important. So let's just like look really quickly. Like, okay, in a voluntary exchange, so that must be related somehow to the mutually beneficial exchange. So he's, okay, so there's some kind of criteria that he's giving us, right? So three things have to happen in order for there to be a voluntary exchange. So that's good. So these are like, let's just make a little note, conditions of voluntary exchange. Uh, you can spell correctly and write legibly if you like. Uh, I do not. So here's one thing. That, let's see if we can see any other kinds of indents or anything kind of useful as we go. Oh, that looks like some nice indentions. Oh, and it's numbered too, but it's numbered with like a decimal point. Um, I don't know if that matters. Let's see, what are we getting? It looks like we're getting um, we're getting some cases. Okay, so that's very nice. You know, that's not up here. It looks like we are getting a definition. Down here, we're getting some cases. So these are cases that are going to help us understand something. And I actually think it's usually a really good idea before you even read a lot of the paper to um, check out the cases like this and just read through them and be like, what do I think about this? Okay, so. Um, used car salesperson uh, turns back the odometer reading on the automobiles, blah, blah, blah. If customers ask whether it's correct, the salesperson says that it's illegal to alter odometer readings. Ah, uh, yes, not answering the question asked, the tactic of jerks everywhere. So 
you want to, it, it's probably a good idea to read through these, not read anything else and just start thinking about them because these are the kinds of uh, examples that the author thinks are going to help uh, either illustrate her case or maybe, uh, maybe there's some, these are supposed to be the problem cases she wants to address, or in this case he, um, but you know, just read through them and, and start getting your juices flowing because remember the point is to figure out for your own self what's go going to happen here and what's going on. Okay. Anything else like that? Uh, consider the following cases. Boom, more cases. Yay, we like cases. Cases are great. They tell us what's really going to happen. So again, take a look at them uh, and just, you know, start thinking like, okay, what kind of things is the, is the author trying to get us to focus on? Anything else? Three. Ooh, some more stuff. Okay. Examples. That's good. So more cases. That's nice. Right? So we got some more cases to work off of. Uh, oh, and some more cases. Ah, I love this. Um, I, I'm actually not joking. I, I, when I write, I always, I don't do numbers. I give everything a little name so that I can refer to it again. But I really like it when authors um, spell out the cases in a nice, clear, easy to find way. Uh, because a lot of times you're going to need to jump around and go back to it. So um, anyways, again, check it out, but don't spend too much time. We're just skimming. We're just skimming. We're just skimming. All right, we're back to the conclusion. Now, one more thing that I want to do. Uh, you're, at this point, you now want to start to jump around and start putting labels on parts of the paper. And I'm not going to do too much of that. But one thing that's kind of useful a lot of the time is like, look here. There's three different principles that, uh, or sorry, three different conditions that we know are going to be important or we've, we're pretty sure are going to be important to uh, the paper, right? So if there's three conditions and we, we've already seen the conclusion, let's see. Oh, and we know that this looks like some kind of introduction type thing, or maybe it's, you know, so let's say it's a intro plus question mark. And we know that there was a fifth section, right? Remember that was the conclusion slash cleanup work. So, if you've got one section in which we spell out, you know, kind of the, the basic thing that we're going to work off of, you know, you, you introduce it for the first time, and we've got another section at the end that does all the cleanup, that leaves three sections. So what do you think each section is going to be about? Well, you might be wrong, but you probably would be pretty well served by a guess that section one is going to be about that thing. Section two, that was a shitty arrow, sorry. Uh, section two is going to be about this thing and section, or sorry, I guess this would be section two, three, and four, because we know the first one is the one where this is being introduced and the last one is the one where the conclusion is. And by the way, he gives the, each of these names, right? So this one's the knowledge condition. This one is the non-compulsion condition. And this one is the rationality condition. And I really need to do a better job using my pen here. Sorry, I hope that made sense. So it's knowledge. <laughs> this is not going to be better. Sorry. Uh, I'll clean it up in the next version of this lecture. Okay. And that's the third one. So we might want, so our first bet, remember, because now, so now we know what's going on, right? We got this idea. All right. We're going to be telling what kind of sales is good and bad. And that's going to have something to do with um, this idea of a mutually beneficial exchange or maybe this idea here of a voluntary exchange. Somehow that's all related. Um, and the voluntary exchange has three conditions and we know there's three other sections. So let's go see if we can find a knowledge condition in one of the sections, a non-compulsion condition in another, and a rationality condition in the third. All right, so our hypothesis is that this one is going to be something about what the people have to know, the knowledge condition, right? That's the hypothesis. Is it true? Well, let's read just a little bit to see if we can read enough to figure out whether or not we're in the right area. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're still talking about mutually beneficial exchange. That's good. I'm not reading the words. I'm just, I'm skimming. So I might be skipping over the thing that I need. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, getting bored, getting bored. Don't know, don't know. Oh, wait, 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 it says information. Oh, oh, it says information. So I must have missed something. All right, hold on. Let's go back. Proxiglate complexity, blah, 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 blah. Oh, so much blah, so much blah. 
So much blah. Eh, skimming, 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 skimming. Do, 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 do. See, I'm skimming. We're just, I'm looking for words like that. Information. I saw it. So I'm going to guess. I'm still moving. Still looking. I'm just kind of, my eyes are just moving, looking for knowledge condition or information. Something like that. Uh, okay, more information. That's good. All right. I won't bore you because I know the answer actually is this is the knowledge condition one. Um, but I'm, I'm doing this the first time that I've looked at this. I haven't looked at this in, since the spring semester. So um, I'm just moving my eyes. Okay. So remember, the set, we knew the first one was going to be, what was it? And I should, let's highlight it so we know the names of stuff. We've got the knowledge condition, non-compulsion, and the rationality. So we figured out the first, or I guess, what was that? Section two was about knowledge. So we're going to guess that this one is about non-compulsion. And just so before I forget, actually, we don't, I don't even need to do that because look at the first word that's right there. Uncompelled. What's the opposite of uncompelled? Compelled. What is compulsion? It's compelling. So that's what we're doing. Boom. All right. That means that by process of elimination, uh, or not even process of elimination, oh, we shouldn't skip. There. So, oh gosh, I was worried for a second. We're going to guess that this one is about the rationality condition. And I really would suggest that if you can, in whatever way that you have available to you, um, and I know doing stuff electronically is kind of a pain, but really, um, especially with stuff like this, write it in there because, you know, if I ask you a question on the exam that's about the rationality condition, um, it will make your life a lot easier if you can just be like, oh, I remember that I wrote that at the top of the page or, you know, at the top of the section and you can just skip right to that and, you know, jump into what you need. Okay, I'm not going to belabor this any further, but you get the general idea of how this works. So the knowledge, you, you've uh, given all these things section, section titles, and usually what you want to do is you want to kind of look through here, and I'm, I don't know if there's going to be an obvious way to do this. Um, and it's not looking that way. But, you know, sometimes you can see words or, um, you know, maybe even spacing or formatting stuff that's going to tell you kind of like give you a clue about how this is going to work. So, you know, think about it like what the person's going to need to do to spell out this knowledge condition, whatever that is. They're going to need to tell you at some point what it is. What is it? How about that? That's cool. Um, it's going to then you need to give you some examples, right? Because nobody is going to explain uh, something, you know, with any kind of usefulness without giving you a bunch of examples. And they're usually going to need to um, do some cleanup. So that means either um, answering objections. Sometimes that means taking up other people's definition of the thing that we're talking about and showing that that's not the right one. Um, clearing up misunderstandings that might be happening um, or just, you know, kind of generally making everything nicer. So those are kind of, that's, this is an exclusive and a general guideline, but when you start going through a section and trying to figure out what's what, uh, you probably, it's probably a good idea to, you know, try to just look and see if you can find any of those things. And look, we already found some places where there's examples being given, right? So you do that, then you try to evaluate, you just try to skim again and just try to find, okay, where is the part that they're telling me what's going on? And then where is the part where they're tell where they're just kind of fixing stuff where they're like oh that's not what i meant or somebody might worry about this but they shouldn't because that's dumb you know <laughs> that sort of thing and oftentimes it is going to be mixed up you know you're going to be doing because you don't it, it is also confusing for the reader if you you know wait you do this way at the beginning and you wait way till the end to answer like kind of obvious questions about it so it's not going to necessarily be clean sections but Though, you know, you want to have things like this in mind. Um, and again, I don't, you shouldn't be reading anything yet. You should just be skimming, really, trying to figure out what's going on and trying to find places where you can write, you know, this paragraph is the place where that thing is happening. Um, and as you do that, you're, you're building up in your own head uh, a sense of what's going on in a way that actually makes sense to you. Okay? Um, Obviously, you can just keep doing this and doing this and doing this until you've actually figured out what's going on. But I'm not going to bore you with that. I will let you do that on your own. All right.